This video is sponsored by Squarespace. There's nothing quite like looking back at the things that you said and wrote as a tween to humble yourself. Whenever I'm having a good day and things seem to be going well in my life, I like to remind myself that I had an internet presence when I was 13, and then everything doesn't feel so sunshine and rainbows anymore. Recently I was reminiscing about this old My Little Pony fan game that was in development when I was a kid, and in anticipation for its release, I spent a lot of time yapping on the forums. I was bored on a random afternoon and decided to revisit visit it for the nostalgia and miraculously I still remembered my login details. And then I had to bear witness to the very extensive collection of hilarious and cringe inducing posts that I made when I was like 13. And I can't keep this all bottled up inside, I just have to share it with you guys and maybe a therapist. So today I thought that you guys could share in my humiliation as I share a bunch of posts that I made when I was like 13 on a My Little Pony forum in the early to mid 2010s. And if you want to make your own site for cringy tweens to make regrettable posts on, boy do I have the solution for you. Squarespace has thousands of unique and stunning website templates which you can then customize, update content, and add features to fit your needs. You can make any Squarespace template do whatever you want so your amazing and epic idea slash product slash site slash brand slash project stands out online on every single device. Squarespace is also just a fantastic solution for merch, whether you're a creator, a small business, or you just want to make silly mugs and shirts to sell to your friends. Design your products and production, shipping, and inventory is handled for you, saving you time and money. Both resources which are pretty invaluable, I've heard. There are endless features for small businesses too. Whether you sell physical or digital products, Squarespace has the tools that you need to start selling online or while looking stunning, sleek, and professional. You can easily sell custom merch and create a passive income stream that engages your audience and scales your brand. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to all of the amazing things that Squarespace can do for you. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash izzies to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. A huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and now let's get back into talking about a bunch of goofy posts that I made as a 13 year old. So for context, the My Little Pony fan game in question is called Legends of Equestria. I'm planning on making a video about it sometime soon since recently it started to shut some of its servers down and an eventual shutdown may be possible, so I won't go into too much detail about it in this video. All you need to know is that I had been following the game's development ever since its announcement around 2011 and I was an avid user of the forums. The game wasn't actually playable and wouldn't be released until 2017, well after I lost interest in it, but every so often they would host open server weekends where they'd make the servers public for two to three days so fans could check in and see what progress the developers had made. A 3D open world My Little Pony game with flying, magic, customization, quests, and exploration was literally all I wanted in life as a child so Legends of Equestria was sacred to me. I religiously checked in with progress and would sit glued to my computer for the entire duration of the open server weekends. And of course, I would post on the forum. Now my posts from this era generally fall into three main categories, embarrassing overexcited child posting, extremely annoying and judgy posts about other people's OCs or how much I hated eloquence, and role playing. Now just know that these posts are extremely embarrassing to me and I've done a lot of soul searching in order to come to terms with how cringe I was as a child. I just hope that you won't see me any different after this. Now enough stalling, let's crack open this decade old My Little Pony forum account and marvel at the horrors within. The first post I made was in May of 2013, over 10 years ago. The topic of the thread was potential lines that the NPC ponies could say when you interact with them, and here were my suggestions. Let me guess, you want my autograph? Oh, I am, er, uh, busy. Please move back, you're in my personal bubble. Maybe I'll talk to you later. When I was younger, I used to want to be an adventurer like you, which I think is meant to be a Skyrim reference. Like my suggestions? Tongue out emoji. And hey, I would judge my younger self for these terrible suggestions and the fact that I had to ask for validation about them, but to be fair, the other suggestions weren't that great either. Is it just me or do you look like my mom? Holds up picture but you look nothing like her. Mommy. Crying face emoji. E equals MC hammer. I figured it out. The world is made of muffins. The user Spencer the Pegasus Guard suggested, quote, Pony 1, that Spencer sure is one handsome devil. Pony 2, and he's modest. The whole package. Sorry, couldn't help it. Oh Spencer, you absolute goofball. I'd love it if some ponies just randomly broke out into the derp song. Hey, it was 2013, we were all cringe back then. Needless to say that none of these made it into the final game. Re Legends of Equestria open server weekend discussion. Oh my gosh, I'm going to spend the whole weekend glued to my 
computer screen. I'm also going to take about a million years to decide what my characters look like. Other LOE bronies. Really? Me? Nodding emoji? Easy on emoticons. Yeah, that little note at the end was added by a moderator because I was using too many emojis and that wasn't the last time I would get told off for doing that. On a thread asking how earth ponies and unicorns might be able to get to Cloudsdale, the big cloud city in the sky, I wrote, quote, On the off chance that any pony will take me seriously, 0.01% chance. Pegasus equals flying, obviously. Unicorn equals cloud walking spell. At the air station, they could have NPCs that grant unicorns a cloud walking spell that wears off when they return to the station. Earth pony, okay, I know this sounds crazy, but earth ponies could ride on Pegasi if the Pegasi sends them an invite thing to ride on them. I think it would be fun. Other than that, air balloons are a really good idea. Please watch the number of emotes used. <laughs> Honestly, in my defense, I actually don't think that I used that many emotes. Like, what can I say? I was an excitable kid. In reply to one user's OC list, which for context was basically a big list of original characters with art and bios that people would post in for the roleplay sections of the forums because back then we didn't have Toy House or anything fancy like that, I made this extremely snooty comment on a user's original character, scolding them for making an alicorn OC. As a kid, I had this real thing against alicorn characters. I thought that they were overpowered and lazily written and not canon enough, which is extremely hypercritical since as you'll see later in the video, I had my own alicorn OC. Anyway, I wanted to mention it because I find it hilarious that I felt this strongly about it at the age of like 13, and also because it's going to come up later, so you know, put a pin in it. And look, I don't want to come back 10 years later just to roast this guy's OCs again, but I will say, it's incredibly funny to me that one of his characters was a mecha pegasus called Sigma Omega. Come on, it's funny, don't lie. In 2015, I had a stroke of genius and wanted to create my own fan wiki for the game. Unfortunately, a wiki which was far more extensive and well written than I could ever manage had already been created. Still, I wanted that glory all to myself, and so I proposed the idea of creating my own fan site. The post hilariously starts with, I need your help. As you know, an LOE wiki is being put together, but I've always figured it's better to have several sources of information, especially if your only one is wikier. So I've decided to create a fan guide website. I spent the last day of the open server weekend flying around and taking screenshots, and I did many of the quests. But as many of you who played the open server weekend know, it would be near impossible to gather all the information in just three days, as well as role playing and having fun. It would be a huge help if you guys could send some screenshots, information, etc. to add to the website. Thanks. I attached a poll to the thread which got 7 responses, uh, for some reason I voted on my own poll and was the only one to vote for the I think it's a great idea option. <laughs> the majority of the responses were, it's a good idea but I don't think people will have reason to use it when they have the wiki instead and I think it's a terrible idea. <laughs> After a bunch of replies questioned how necessary such a site would be, I updated the main post, writing, move updated slash move. I have created an account for wikia under the same username as my LOE forum account so please no more suggestions about contributing to the week yet, as I already am as of now. So as of now, please only post your opinion on the subject, feedback, or screenshots if you are willing to let me use them. Also, please be aware that if I were to create the site, I would have to pay to run it on its own domain, and not through another site. I could choose the option of running it through Weebly, the website designer that I would probably be using for free, but instead of being soandso.com, it would be soandso.weebly. I would be fine with paying, as it's pretty cheap, but what's your guys' opinion? Do you think free or paid? Let me know, I'm pretty unsure about it myself. Thank you! <laughs> there really is just so much to unpack here. The absolute denial that I was in that no one wanted a terrible rip-off fan site, the broken BB code, the thank you in pastel pink impact font, the boldface lie that I would be fine with paying money for a website domain even though I was like 13 and didn't have any money of my own to pay for such a thing, the fact that I was using Weebly, oh Weebly rest in peace, uh wait never mind, Weebly is still a thing apparently. I never did end up making that fan site and you know what, thank god for that. I know for a fact that I would have begged my parents for like $15 a month to keep my beloved Weebly fan site up and they didn't deserve that. Okay, we're far enough into the video that I can start pulling out the real cringe. The fake forum fans have left. Only real forum heads will understand the depths of my twisted 13 year old mind. On a thread titled, I'm not ready for season 5, I wrote, quote, I'm not ready yet, I need help. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I'm still processing all the facts about Twilight being an alicorn. 
Personally, I liked her better as a unicorn, and even Lauren Force said that her plans for Twilight Sparkle are irrelevant now that she's an alicorn. It was too soon, and whenever I look at her, I just feel jealous. I don't know why. Anyway, while I'm still living in season four and back, season five has already started, and with Equestria Girls and a movie, I just don't have time to watch season five, and I don't even have motivation. Does any pony agree, or do I just have problems? I need closure. It absolutely kills me how desperate I was in this post. The opening line sounds like a call to a 911 operator during a break-in or something. I even went to the effort of editing the opening line to be massive and bright red, you know, just in case anyone missed it. Not even mentioning the whole when I look at Twilight Sparkle I feel jealous thing. Feel free to psychoanalyze 13 year old me having a burning hatred for a fictional horse in the comments. <laughs> Ending the post by asking if I have problems as well is extremely bold because, you know, the post sort of speaks for itself in that regard. <laughs> okay, so you know that whole child me hating alicorns with a burning passion thing that we put a pin in like a few minutes ago? Well, we're taking that pin out. It's time to revisit one of the most notable threads that I made on the forums titled Alicorns in Legends of Equestria. Warning, rant ahead. Okay, so I'm always hearing the suggestion, you should add alicorns to the game. I am sick of hearing this. Look guys, I understand you want to play as your alicorn OC. I totally understand. I have nothing against alicorn OC at all, but for Legends of Equestria, it would just totally ruin the game. Well, in my opinion anyway. They would have magic and flight and extra speed, so why would anyone pick a pony with just one of those traits? They would be extremely OP, and Eloi would be overrun with them. It's not canon. You don't see Eloquans running all over the place in the show because they are portrayed as god-type beings. It's just my opinion, but playable Eloquan characters would ruin the game. What do you think, smiley face? For context, I would rant to just about anyone who would listen about how much I hated Eloquan alicorns and how they were overpowered and stupid and people shouldn't have them as their OCs to the point where I made a whole Wattpad novel chapter guide thing about it which is a story for another day. <laughs> so a judgy and annoying post like this comes as no surprise to me unfortunately. While most others in the thread agreed at least to an extent likely because this anti alicorn sentiment was pretty popular back in the fandom thankfully another user called me out on it writing in part I'm sick and tired of other people telling me what my pony should be. I don't want you your headcanon so stop trying to shove it. Love and tolerate much, but I guess you guys don't do that. Honestly, she gagged me. She was 100% right. Of course, at the slightest sign of confrontation, I immediately backed off writing this whole post about how I wasn't attacking anyone and how I was fine with Elecorno C's, which was obviously a lie. I was a massive hater. <laughs> Alright, before we get into the final and, in my opinion, most embarrassing thread that I made on the forums, here are a few funny tidbits that I found while I was scrolling through my posts. After the open server weekend in August of 2015, I made a screenshot thread for everyone to add their screenshots and stories to, which got a grand total of zero replies. I also really wanted to be a moderator or some sort of, like, respected community figure, despite the fact that I was 13 and had absolutely no moderation experience. So I went through this period where I would act like a moderator even though I wasn't in the hopes that the actual moderators would see me and notice my extreme skills and hire me. And for anyone who has been a moderator on a forum, you'll know that some average Joe sweeping in and acting like a moderator when they're not is not in fact helpful, it's actually extremely annoying. <laughs> At username, welcome to the community. Your OC sounds great. I hope to see you around in the game this open server weekend. Remember to read the forum rules and stuff and have fun. Is this topic going to be locked up now? In response to a thread titled, Why Can't Legends of Equestria Host 24-7 Servers? I wrote, quote, This question has already been answered several times on other threads. I presume this thread will be locked, seeing as you've already received an answer. I would advise you to check the other threads in case your questions have already been answered there. Oh my god. God, I was such an asshole. It's actually hard reading that back. <laughs> Do you ever look back on something like this and become genuinely horrified? I was that guy on the forums, and trust me, you don't want to be that guy. Nobody likes that guy. A pretty significant chunk of the posts I made were role plays, and despite how hilarious and embarrassing that sounds, they were actually pretty boring. The only thing really worth noting is that, ironically, I had an Alicorn OC called Cloudshine, so yes, alongside being annoying, I was also the biggest hypocrite in the world. And I actually I actually also did some art of me and another forum user's OC from the roleplay. I don't actually have a lot of digital art from this time in my life, most of it has been lost to time, so it's actually really really cool and very nostalgic to see my early pony fan art. Okay, I've beaten around the bush long enough, it's time to get to the coup de grace, the post that genuinely made my jaw drop when I saw it. You guys are gonna have to pinky promise me that this isn't gonna alter your view on me forever. The post is titled, Interest Check. 
dragon MMO RPG. So you know that 100% science-based dragon MMO that I made a video about a while ago? So I didn't make that post, but by god, if this post had made it out of containment, I could very well have been the laughing stock of the internet alongside that 26-year-old science-based dragon MMO lady. The post is really long, so I do apologize for that, but it would be revisionist to cut or alter any parts of this post. This is my shame. And it reads as follows. AKA shameless self-promotion, ha. Huh? Hi everyone, I have an idea I'd like to interest check with you. It's basically a game, a 3D MMO RPG dragon game made and hosted on the website Roblox. Now before you click out of this thread, let me answer the question, why Roblox? Why not Unity, Unreal Engine, or something better? Well, I did look into those, and I've actually tried my hand at Unity in the past, but it's decently hard, to me at least, and I'm only one person. But my holidays are fast approaching, and I need a project to fill my time. Time. I believe I can make this game in a fairly short amount of time compared to other game engines slash software due to Roblox's simple coding language and ease of access. It's been my dream since I was much younger to make a game like this and one day I hope to make it in a real engine. However that, if it ever happened, would be far in the future. But for now I had to stick with Roblox. Here are a few reasons that I picked it. Simple coding and scripting language. It's not as bad as you think. Roblox games can actually be half decent with good coding and enough effort put in. Accessibility. Roblox is free so anyone can join and play the game. It also hosts servers for the multiplayer aspect. With that out of the way, let me explain the game itself. Out of sadness at the lack of dragon MMOs on the internet, I set out to create one of my own, and thus Yuna, pronounced Yuna, was created. A lush land filled with dragons of all kinds. Oh my god. Okay. I can get through this. The game itself is set in a large world map with several different areas and secrets to discover. There will be many dragon breeds and colors to pick from, each with their own abilities and lore. The dragon models themselves are 2D paper morphs, still 2D images of your character. The other option is to create the models using shapes on Roblox, in which case they will look blocky and horrible. <laughs> The art will be done by myself. At first there will most likely be only a few breeds to pick from, but more will be added as the game progresses. Lastly, there will be an administrator slash moderator system, in which each admin slash mod, A slash M, of the game will take on the look and persona of one of the world's gods or deities. Naturally, as seasons change, deities change too, so as AMs come and go, the deities will come and go with them. If an AM leaves or is just removed from their role, the deity will have left the world, possibly off to find new worlds or just for a break. However, the deities will return as new AMs fill the old slots. Some planned release features, many unique dragon breeds and colors to choose from, inventory, currency, and apparel systems, large map with many areas for role playing, flight, magic, and more. Pick your allegiance, form clans and make alliances, meet the world's deities, events, and frequent updates. If all goes according to plan, there may be an open server weekend sometime in January, possibly later as setbacks do happen. <laughs> where we open our doors to test the most likely alpha or pre-alpha version of the game. Basically, I'd love to work on this project and create a place for dragon lovers to roleplay, explore, and hang out in. However, it will take a fair amount of work and I'd like to gauge interest. Would you be willing to make an account on Roblox to play? Would you play the game at an open server weekend? Would you apply to be an admin or mod? Let me know. Feedback, suggestions, and opinions are greatly appreciated. So I had always been obsessed with dragon games, especially flying dragon games. That's why Spiral Dawn of the Dragon was like my literal favorite game ever as a kid. And this was around the time that I was really getting into Flight Rising, which was a dragon breeding browser game with a bunch of different like dragon breeds, colors, elements, and allegiances, and 11 different deities or gods. Basically, I wanted to make my own flying dragon game with a Flight Rising coat of paint and slap it into Roblox. Which in retrospect is absolutely hilarious, but back then I was envisioning it in my mind and it was glorious. True to the post, I had in fact tried my hand at Unity and other more advanced game making softwares, but it was too advanced for me to wrap my little head around and so the closest alternative that I could think of was, you guessed it, Roblox. <laughs> Which honestly in and of itself is still a fairly complex game creator because making games is hard. I have the feeling that even if I did pursue this project I would have found it an incredibly difficult task and far too difficult for me as a 13 year old to do. But I digress. For that one moment when I made that post, 
The dream was alive and it felt so real. And then absolutely nobody replied and then I realized the dream was not in fact alive. It was very, very dead. <laughs> and hey, I know it's cringe, but come on, a lot of you guys probably tried to start these really ambitious projects when you were a kid without any clue of the actual scope and time and talent and money that it would take to make something like that. I remember one of my classmates in primary school told me that he was going to make like the next big GTA game and he was going to work his way up through a few entries and then eventually get into 3D and it was gonna like become the new GTA and I didn't have any reason to doubt him I was 13 I was like yeah that's probably gonna happen good for you <laughs> and hey if you're willing to share I definitely love to hear some stories of forum posts or projects or things like that that you guys tried to do as a kid if nothing else to make me feel better about myself and yes while all of these forum posts and projects are genuinely hilarious to look back on they're also just super nostalgic for me it makes me miss the era of the forum so so much as a kid it was so fun to join in on these little niche communities to check what the latest posts were that day to customize your forum banner and of course to talk to the moderators and admins which as a kid felt like talking directly to god forums were great and even though they hold a lot of embarrassing memories for me i miss them very dearly thank you guys so much for watching i really really appreciate it um i really hope that you guys enjoyed that video topic um i've been thinking lately about incorporating some more kind of like fun silly videos into my upload schedule I guess. Um, I still definitely want to do more like research heavy deep dive videos but I also have a bunch of topics that I want to cover where it's just kind of like silly and fun and me talking about things that I like like The Sims and Neopets and pet sites and games from the 2000s and my little pony and stuff like that um so yeah let me know if you want more videos like this i definitely had a very embarrassing online presence when i was a child so if you guys want me to revisit anything else um like i definitely have a lot of cringy wattpad role plays and books um and a bunch of other like forums that i was on that i might be able to dig up so if you guys are interested in that definitely let me know um i would be keen slash repulse to do that so uh yeah let me know anyway thank you guys so much for watching i really really appreciate it and i really hope to see you in the next one bye a huge thank you to my garfield overlords over on patreon zoe mars xavier raho vivian valencia thy heavenly sophie h simon sheriff whiskey oliver brains michelle olson matt lrj lee xx katrina likes 5e stuff joe bradshaw jiffy the punk jet secret jesse chisholm jar the bar hazy helm hamburger hand grip gunderson dozo blint doug dana home gardener chicory bunzo blue mayfeld astream vortex and a riddle wrapped in an enigma hidden by a question mark thank you guys so much for supporting me it means the world if you want to join these guys over on patreon the link will be in the description and yeah thank you so much for watching thank you so much for supporting me and i really hope to see you in the next one bye